Tam bude. Ona kuše. So today somebody sent me a video on Instagram and they said, is this true? And the video was titled, are Mormons Christians? So I messaged her back and I said, you know what, let me check it out and I'll let you know. And I just watched the video and it's actually like 95% accurate, a lot of good facts, but there was 5% that completely threw off the whole video that, that made um, the religion that I'm a part of seem completely, completely off. So that got me thinking, a lot of people still have no idea why I was in Sierra Leone in the first place, why I ever got there. And the ones that do know I was there with my church, the Mormon church, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. But a lot of people don't even know how that works. Some people think that we're, it's a paid mission. Other people think that, you know, they, they just don't know. So I figured I'd just clear the air and explain what it is. So how this thing works in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints as Mormons, as we're frequently called, when a young man or a young woman turn 18 or 19 respectively, they have the option and are encouraged to serve a two-year mission or 18 months for women 18 months for men uh two years now how it works you have to set you have to fit uh you have to fill out papers you have to f uh meet certain physical requirements mental requirements and spiritual requirements for example um you can't be just sleeping around and then the next day decide to go on a two-year mission you can't be in our uh, religion, we don't drink alcohol. You can't be drinking alcohol until the day you leave and then quit and and expect to to go and tell people that they shouldn't drink it. So there's requirements that have to be hit. Once those are hit, you send in your packet or your email or whatever to the the head of our church, the first presidency is what we call it, the prophet. And from there, they actually decide, we believe through revelation, exactly where each individual is to serve. So when I sent in my information and said, hey, I wanna go on this thing, I didn't know I was gonna go to Africa. I didn't even know where Sierra Leone was. I could have ended up in the United States. I could end up in Mexico. I could end up in South Africa. I could end up in Russia. I had no idea. You literally get an email that tells you where you're gonna spend the next two years and that's where you go. So, you know, back in 2010, um, I actually, it was December of 2009, because then they give you a couple months to prepare. I got this letter, at the time it was a packet, like a letter in the mail, and it said, uh, Elder Wood, because that's what you're called as an elder. Elder Wood, you are hereby called to serve um, in Sierra Leone, Freetown. I'm like, where? Run into the office, got on my mom's computer, typed in Sierra Leone, saw the map of Africa, that's it, that's all I knew. Um, I didn't know. I had no idea. So hope that for anyone that saw uh, some things post online that said that I moved to Sierra Leone permanently or whatever the case is, I, it was completely by chance, number one. Uh, second thing, a couple, a couple uh, rules that we have to follow, a couple of like how this actually works. You leave your family, okay? And at the time, now this has since changed, but at the time, you left your family, and for two years, you could only speak with them twice a year, so four times, so Mother's Day and Christmas. So for two years, 24 months, 730 days, I spoke on the phone with my family four times. And the purpose of that was basically to just get your mind right, to get in, you know ingrained with the culture, to leave home behind and focus on the work. That's number one. Now that sense changed and that's not the rule anymore, but still the rule is, you know, you only can communicate with your family and other and others on Mondays back home because if you're there, be there, do the work. Don't be worried about what's going on at home. That's one of the rules. The other thing that I wanted to clear up is it is not paid. It is not paid. So it's not like one of these UNICEF trips or mercy ships or one of these where it's, well, I don't think mercy ships is that way, but it's not one of these paid things, right? It's not even volunteer. Like we actually paid for our, ourselves every month from the account that I had at home, a $400 check was cut to my church that paid for me and my living expenses. And we lived on a tight budget. Okay. Of like tight in the sense of what, you know, as Americans we're used to now, of course, 
not Sierra Leone type because, you know, we're not used to that. But it was extremely tight. We had to pay for our own transportation. Um, we had to pay for everything. So that meant we had to eat local dishes if we wanted to make the money work. That meant we had to haggle the Okada driver. That meant that we had to, you know, barter and bargain and, you know, everything that, that, that people in Sierra Leone would go through, we had to go through and it was awesome. That's the other thing. And then, um, you know, lastly, how it works is a lot of people think that we're over there and, you know, we're trying to save the world and we think everyone's wrong and all this different stuff. You know, how it worked is we simply approach people guided by what, what we felt, you know, what we should do. And we told them the message, you know, Muslim, Christian, inside of Christianity, Catholic, uh, Protestant, Baptist, it didn't matter. We simply approached people. We told them what we believed. We shared our testimony of our church and what it's done for us. And then we invited people to join if they so choose, choose, chose, and we asked them to pray and ask God. We said, look, if you believe in God, wouldn't he tell you the answer? And we'd ask him, we'd say, hey, come to our church, pray, ask God if this is true. And if it's true, come get baptized and come and, and enjoy the happiness that we have. And that's it. That's what we did. So I did that for two years. Um, sounds cliche, but honestly, the greatest two years of my life, I did some of the most uncomfortable things that I ever had to do, like getting up in front of hundreds of people and sharing what I believe, um, you know, spending, you know, one thing that we do every single month is we take an entire day and we fast and we don't eat and we don't drink. And now I know if you're a Muslim and you're listening to this, you're like, yeah, whatever. We did that for a whole month. We did it for one day a month and it's, it's a complete two, it's two meals or 24 hours and when you're walking around during those 24 hours, it is really, really difficult, right? Extremely difficult. It's not like we go to a job and sit there. It is, it, it, I know that if you're listening and you're Muslim, you know what it's like. You did do it a whole month. And so I went through some of those times, those days, I didn't think I could make it. I mean, so I did some of the most uncomfortable things that I have ever done in my life. But when it was over, it was literally the best feeling, the best sense of accomplishment that I had ever had in my entire life, thinking about all 730 days, how many struggles I went through, you know, what it was like to learn the language and, and get used to the food and love the people and love the, the, the everything, the culture, the land, the heat, the rains, Hamatan, I mean, everything. It was the best experience I've ever experienced. And it, it, it like I have, n there's not been one day since I came home in 2012, April 9, April 9, 2012, not one day has passed that I haven't thought about Sierra Leone. Not a single day. So anyway, I hope that clears it up. Um, that's why I went to Sierra Leone. As a Mormon missionary, I had no choice of where I was gonna go. But when I received the call, I could have declined it and said, hey, I'm out. I don't wanna do this. I could have. As well as once I got there, at any time I could have said, hey, I'm done, thrown the towel in and gone home. That was up to me. And believe me, there was times when I thought about it. Sincerely, sincerely thought about how hard this was and maybe I should just go back and, it, you know, but I didn't. And it was the greatest thing I ever did. So, nine dots.